Hey everyone. It's it's Rita. <laughs> Boy, he's getting louder than me, I think. It's Rita from Ruth's Rita to the Rescue here for this morning's Cricket Chat. I have to work fast today because I have to go to the hospital um, by 10. So I thought we would do this really fun dimensional card that I found when we were working on... Um, the mermaid box, I thought that, um, I found this and I remembered that we had it in Cricut Design Space and I wanted to show you because I wanted to show you how to put a sentiment in here. It's a little bit tricky. And then also wanted to show you this really cool envelope which you could reuse um, for something that was thicker, um, for anything that had like these pop dots that we've done before. I kind of like this because it's gusseted on the three areas. So hello to all of my friends. I'm going to jump right in here because I know I can talk and I know I have to be somewhere at 10. So hello, hello, Lori, Joe, Amy, Lisa, everyone. Um, I'm just going to jump right in and show you where to find this and also how to do the sentiment. So here is the, um, here is the file. Let me show you where to find it. So in images... Um, you can type in, if you go to image sets, um, you can type in dimensional, which this is what dimensional, spell it with an S, <laughs> dimensional. Um, and you will come up with, this is where we found that um, mermaid that we used right here, Dimensional Scenes Mermaid Tales. But I forgot that there was this tea and cakes set here. It's called Dimensional Scenes Tea and Cakes. Um, I suppose you could probably find this through uh, typing in tea or cakes or something, but you'd have to sift through a lot of stuff. So here is uh, here are several images that are dimensional that you can use the pop dots on, and some of them have, I, there are no cakes. Well, there's some, one with cupcakes, but this is the one that I chose because I knew it was a card. I could see the dimension here in the card. Um, and these other ones, this one might be a card as well. I'm going to have to go back and check that. But these two are not because I don't see any dimensions there. Okay, so I'm going to click that and bring it in by highlighting it and bringing it into insert images. I already have one here, so let's look at what we get. So normally you guys know that I don't generally um, cut my own envelopes just because I feel like you can buy them for cheaper, but I actually like this envelope because it's gusseted. Um, it has two rows of scoring, which creates a little gusset there, which I like. So I did keep this. Um, but the card comes in um, a little smaller than what I want it to come in at. So if you want to resize the, um, the card with the envelope, what you can do is you can either try resizing it using these, these um, arrows and um, the envelope will resize with the card. But if you're kind of a stickler like I am, and you wanna make sure it's a standard size, um, so this one here, I wanted to make it a standard size, which is that A2 size that we love, um, which remember is um, eight and a half, approximately eight and a half by five and a half. And, and then when we fold it, it becomes four and a quarter by five and a half, right? So um, what I have done in this is I've ungrouped it and put the envelope in the back here. It doesn't matter where all this other stuff goes, but um, put the envelope here in the back with the tip here, the top being flat. And then I will regroup the whole thing here. And then I can see um, how tall this is. Now I'm gonna look here and I want my card to be eight and a half. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I, I need to, to grow by about an inch so I can pull this down from for one inch like that. And then it will be sort of similar to the card that I already resized, okay? So also what you got is so in addition to this really cool 
envelope and this really dimensional, awesome tea cup. Let me just, mm -mm -mm. let me just move this out of the way. Okay is you get this card. Now, um, if you want to put a sentiment on it, which I always love to do, I think it makes it look professional, you're going to need to um, do something to this card because normally when we're looking at a card, I tell, I tell you to look at it like as if this were the inside, but it's not, right? This is where the teacup is going to go. So right here is where the sentiment needs to go, which... I suppose you could do it upside down or something. Um, but to me, I think it's so much easier to just flip it. Flipping is up here and you have two choices. You can flip horizontally or you can flip vertically. So in this case, we're gonna flip vertically. So that way we now have the top of the card, the front part of the card is on top and the inside bottom or back of the card is on bottom. Now we can just go ahead and enter a text box. Um, I think we should do something like you're my cup of tea or something. Um, so I'll do that. You're my cup of tea. How's that? And um, it, you know that this, when we do this, this is a, a uh, cut file. So we need to change it to a uh, print file or draw file, something that's going to use our pens. So we can go up here and choose whatever font we want, as long as we're choosing a writing font. Um, so here is a writing font of the same font that I had, which is Cricut Sans. But you know, you can choose any one here. And you can also filter, as somebody uh, wanted me to point out, you can also filter just the writing. And the filter is right up here. So if you choose uh, filter and writing, then you can see all of the just writing fonts that you would um, be able to choose. Um, and in the event that it has two modes, such as single layer cutting and writing, it will tell you. So if I chose this one, which was from the calligraphy collection, right? I would have to make sure that it is, where, how do I get this? That it is set on writing and not on regular because regular would become back to a cut file. I hope that that makes sense to everyone. Um, also, you know, if you remember your uh, font name. Uh, so here, Cricut Sans, which is what I wanted originally. Make sure that it's in writing. You can search for it. And then here's your, here's your, um, sentiment but I think that's a little too big for what I'm looking for so I do want to make sure that it's um, centered so the two lines are centered on top of each other and then I'm going to make them smaller so to make it centered you go to alignment and choose center I know it's just a small detail but it's one I like to do it just looks more professional and then I think it's a little too big so I'm going to make it a little smaller and I'm going to center it in the middle of my card and then all I have to do is select it and attach which is down here okay so attach and now that sentiment you're my cup of tea is going to cut with the drawing on there i'm going to cut these two pieces i'm not going to cut this um the hold on let me just get rid of this part i'm not going to cut the uh the teacup because it's just a straight cut and it will take up an awful lot of time so i'm not going to do that but i want to show you how this envelope cuts and how this works with the sentiment um, so let me, uh, get this started and I'm going to show you how to cut and then I'll show you how to put it together. Okay. So we're going to hit make it and here it is. So there's our card It has, this, it has, um, the scoring and now I have a maker that I'm using, but I'm going to switch the scoring to my stylus because it's just one, um, it's just one. Uh, score line but on the envelope I probably will sh sh uh, switch it to the scoring wheel okay so let's hit continue I'm using medium cardstock so let me show you 
how to switch from one to the other. We'll start with the envelope. Um, and let me get over here. So you see here, whoops, well, sorry. Um, it says edit tools right here. It says I need the single scoring wheel in clamp B. Remember you have two clamps. Clamp A is the one that holds the scoring stylus. It's on, on the left, holds the scoring stylus and it holds the um, pens only. Okay. So, uh, and if you're, go if you're a, have a maker and you want to use the scoring wheel, you have to actually take out your, uh, blade and the blade housing. So let me just go over here and show you what I mean. So here I have my, this is my scoring stylus. It's always in. So I need to, you can do this either before or the machine will prompt you. Um, if you don't put it in, the machine will prompt you to put it in. Um, if you get stuck and you don't want to use the scoring wheel and you have a maker, this would only happen to you if you had a maker, but if you had a maker and it's telling you to use a scoring wheel and you just want to use the stylus, you have to back out um, of that particular uh, mat. Okay, you just have to back out and you just hit this button to have it come back but in this case we're just going to do this scoring with the scoring wheel and that's fine and then I need to get a pen ready for when I do the next I think we'll use this one let's see if it works yep it works um, so it's going to do the scoring. Remember, it does scoring before cutting so it's a little bit backwards but it's you know, just so you remember, all scoring is done first, then writing if you have writing. And you could, by the way, have written a return address label or even a the to and from type of uh, the whole addresses here on your envelope. And you wouldn't have had to um, address it by hand if you knew who you were going to give this to. So this would be something you could do after the scoring is done. But um, so for now, the scoring is about done and I'm gonna put back my housing, my blade and my housing. I'm getting a prompt on my screen to do so. And then when I put it back, I open the clamp and make sure that the top part of the housing or this part which juts out, it's like a neck, is all the way down and then close the clamp and hit the blinking C um, and it will finish up with the cut. I'm just putting my scoring uh, wheel back so I don't lose it. I have it in this handy dandy tool caddy. If you have a maker and you have all of these little tools, this thing is awesome. And it's pretty indestructible. I mean, I wouldn't like throw it under a bus or anything, but I've dropped it so many times it never opens or cracks or breaks. So I thought that was pretty cool. Um, and you can buy that through Cricut. It's um, on their website. Okay, so my envelope's done. So I'm going to pop in my card. Or This is my card. So I have to go back to my screen and change it from the single scoring wheel to the stylus. Super easy to do. And I've shown you that before. But let me just go back and just kind of show you what you get. So here is, if you want to change, let's see. So here, I'm, I'm doing my second page here and it says tools and material lo loaded edit tools so I can just have this edit um, and choose scoring stylus and apply and that way I won't have to swap out my wheel okay so I'm just going to let that go and while that goes I want to show you what the envelope um, has produced I'm going to move you once again Give me a second. I got to put my pen in. Do that right now. All right. So let me move you. Yeah, I think writing the address on the envelope would it's it's really it would be really pretty that way. I suppose that's a real good reason to make your own envelopes. Okay, so here's what the envelope looks like and this is was done with the scoring wheel it's a single scoring wheel so it's just one single uh divot inside a score so this is how you would how you would fold it you would fold it 
here. Let me move this. We fold it here and then fold again. So see, you'd have, actually you'd have this gusset here. It also has these little tabs. You just go over all around those edges and do that double score. And this is what produces the gusset. See that? And I'll do the fourth one. And you have a fully gusseted. Yes, you could do that too, Michelle. Unfortunately, though, if you, um, Michelle's saying you could do on the same side, you could do personally the back. Um, it, you couldn't do both, unfortunately, because remember the writing is on the inside. And, um, so because we flipped it and did the writing on the inside, you could put your, um, your, the, you know, made by Rita or something like that on the top inside of the card. You could do that. But remember that the, uh, sentiment is going to appear here and you can't, the machine can't like flip over the paper, but it's a great idea. I love taking ownership of your um, of your images. So here, I'm just gonna glue this up and there are these little tiny tabs here. So you do those first um, and actually, a little hard to get your finger down in there so if you can you can use a, a little uh, tool or something and then the, the envelope gets uh, glued here not on the actual tabs because they they go in there and you sometimes your your flap doesn't cover all of these sides but do it on the inside of the flap okay and you can sort of stick your fingers in there to create that gusset. Now this is perfect for anything. It doesn't have to be this particular card, but this is perfect because it has that gusset, okay? And let's put together the card. So the card is dimensional. What's really cool about it is, I'm gonna get my cutout pieces here. So what's really cool about it is, my card so this has a front that is all sort of cut out along the side so to accommodate my design and yet it has the back that is just plain square okay but what's really cool about it is the teacup has uh, like six I think it's six it has this at the very back and then it has this this so one two then it goes it goes like this. So you start with the yellow or any color you choose. This is very colorful and you could use your own color scheme. But then you put this one, this one, and then you put uh, the pink one next. And then the yellow one. But what I liked about this was that you could add dimension to it. So I thought, you know, let's keep these all layered like this, but let's put the dimension in the back of the yellow one so that it looks like an actual teacup, you know, because a teacup is not flat, it's rounded by putting dimension there. That's going to give it a real look of um, that teacup. So let's go ahead and start gluing. Uh, first, I'm going to do the these two little edges around the outside of the card. I don't think these, and you could do more dimensions if you wanted to, but I think one is enough. But if you wanted to do more than one, I, I kind of did debate maybe putting an extra layer, especially since we have that gusseted envelope but um i thought well how would they do it professionally they probably just put one now uh for people who want to do a really truly dimensional card or shadow box which i know is making the rounds in the in the um, groups um we can do one of those in a future episode because those are really fun and they can get put into a frame, like a shadow box frame. So we can do a shadow box one uh, 
coming up okay so here's my first piece on there and then there's going to be my second piece just dot a little bit of glue here so that it stays we don't use a whole lot of glue remember and if you're wondering about the glue if you're new here <laughs> um, we use art glitter glue that's the stuff and you do not have to use it it does work really great for um, paper crafts because it just glues clear but you don't have to use it um, there are there are a number of glues out there that do the trick just nicely but um, if you can get your hands on it you can you could certainly it will help you I think and there's a link after I post this video there'll be a link to create for less but you can also buy it on Etsy so here this one here I want to put in the background okay so I feel like I'm talking really fast <laughs> um, I'm just usually I'm not even aware of the time so um so here this one here we're going to just put flat okay but the other ones we're going to give it a little pop with a pop dart let's do that at the end so first we're going to use the yellow one we're going to glue the back of the next piece don't glue the actual piece here it it ends up costing causing problems because not all of that piece in the back is is going to be covered by the next layer, if that makes sense to you. So there's our two layers. Here's our third layer. So what I'm saying is don't put it here. Put it on the back of your next layer, okay? And so there's our third one. And then the next one, and if you're puzzled, the reason why this one goes next is that this one has more cuts out. So that's how you know. This one, you have to be a little more precise with the glue and try to avoid too much glue on those stripes there because it will sort of squeeze out and this is why I wouldn't put it together on the um, card itself because I might have to go back and I used a little weeding tool just to kind of pick up some of that glue because if you try to put your fingers in there it might smear all right and then the last piece yes Christy you do when you're doing um a layered image you you start with the thing that has the least amount of cuts that's the bottom I don't start from the front and go back I don't I don't know I guess I never thought of doing it that way but <laughs> um, this way it makes more sense to me but you could certainly do it front to back I guess you could do it that way I just like the idea of building up from the layer so and I have a base there. Okay, so there's our teacup. And look at how, see how it's been cut? So now we see all one, two, three, four, five of the layers. We have yellow, light pink, hot pink, and that green, right? Okay, so now we want to give it a little bit of dimension. And we're going to use... Um, these this is just uh wh where is the thing okay so here are our pop dots these pop dots are um are found at any craft store i've used them before and you what you do is you pop out the dot and they have sticky on both sides okay but what ends up happening is you use it all and then you have this grid left so um, what I do because I'm super frugal is I cut the grid pieces off like this and I use it on the back of um, things where I can use more of a strip type of thing so here is this Right, and then I have another piece here or this piece here that'll work. And it doesn't really matter how you place it because really what you wanna do is just create that lift on your, on your card. So here we go. So we'll put, I 
this here. Maybe we need another little piece. We cut a little piece and put it here. Then we take off the backing, which did I already take off the backing off of this one? I did. Okay, so we take off the backing and now we're gonna place it on our card. We're just gonna line it up like so, and it creates a dimension. You see that? It creates this dimension as if it's a three-dimensional uh, or two-dimensional. I don't know if it's three or two-dimensional, but it creates a look like it's a real teacup. And um, it's really cute, and it fits perfectly in our gusseted envelope like this and then you could close it that way. Maybe put a sticker here. And again, remember you can, you could, um, if you're doing this for some one particular person, you could definitely give, uh, use your machine to write the address and your return address, or you could use stickers, it's up to you. So that is dimensional card. And that, remember to find it by going into image sets and choosing dimensional, and you'll find the dimensional tea and cakes. Okay, um, so that is it for today. I had to be real fast, so I hope you apologize. Normally, I, I can sit and answer questions, but this time I, I am, I'm heading out uh, to the to the hospital. So I hope you forgive me for, um, for having to talk so fast. Um, hope you all have a wonderful day and I will see you again tomorrow. And I, I think this works where you post, where I'm posting the projects ahead of time. So that way you can decide, do you want to tune in the next day as well as having the, um, project right there so you can open it up. Yeah, you could, of course, Constant wants to know if you can substitute the, the teacup. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. All right. And I hope you have a lovely day. We'll see you again tomorrow. Take care.